Hello, everyone. Um, we are about to get started. Um, before we start today's course, um, I would suggest you go to the agenda page, a uh, web page. That's our web practicum page, and then download the data we needed today. If we go to the um, the week two climate tracks, which is our today's topics, there are some files that you could download. Make sure you update it a little bit because the page has just updated. Um, there is a template we are going to use. So if we scroll down to the page, it may take some time to download the one millimeter um, good average template that we will use today. The link's over here. And there are complete cartography elements that can also be downloaded, but this will take a lot of time. So I created a simplified version of the atlas. So if we go to the simplified atlas, you would go to GitHub link that allow you to download the file, which would be a file that ended with .tt.gzip. This is the cartography format we use in DSS Studio. And also the label file, you can download it and put it into send space. And by the way, in today's course, we would record it on the cloud um, and share it later uh, on the YouTube channel. So for users not able to attend the course, they can review it. Everything's good. Everyone could hear my voice clearly. Good. Raise your hand or anything that let me know. Um, cool. So let's get started a little bit review of the assignment last week. So just quickly go through last week's contents. We go through uh, some basic um, interface files and how to add atlas, all the functions that some basic, especially the one I mentioned is the accessory tool, which allow you to modify an empty file. And the assignment is built upon this. So the primary, the purpose is to upgrade like a low resolution parcellation to a higher resolution. And the links provided with steps. So I really highly recommend you go through it so you have more idea. And here I just demonstrate how to do it. Um, I'm not going to show all the process because it may take some time. So here's the assignment file. If you go to the link and then there's um, a lower resolution, four millimeter Cretox random parcellation. So this random parcellation being used in civil study. And what you, you can do first is to see what this file looks like. You could open this file within the tool tab of the O1 view images. So if you click on view images, you can select this file or you could just drag the file, the file in DSS Studio, and DSS Studio will open it. And in this interface, you can see a lot of information showing up. And here you can see the bustle size is four millimeter, the dimensions here. And the S row is a transformation matrix that transform the bustle coordinate to M9 coordinate. So the first step here to do is we need to upgrade, upgrade it by resampling, resampling it. So there's a manual called volume. If you are using a Mac version, this top menu will be on the top. And then click on regret. And here's the one, and assign one means that we are going to resample it from four millimeter to one millimeter. Click on it. And you will see the image become much larger. The dimensions get put, increased by four times with muscle, by, uh, muscle size being smaller to one millimeter. But you can still see here is that a lot of the the right angle things is not really smooth. So the next step usually here after upgrading, we will smooth the regions. So those morphology operator will be a, is designed for region file, especially for those regions that <clears throat> with just a integer labeling. So once you smooth it, you will get a result similar like this. So the, the, the contour will be smooth, and then you can save it to a new new file. So here I just save it like uh, adding like a post piece of smooth and it's also upgraded up sample to the one minimum resolution. 
And then the next step is uh, we would need to assign those those labels to the new ICBN space. So the next step here is to open the one millimeter fit file. So the fit file in DSS Studio is recorded ready to track file. We can open it in step T3. So it's more like the end product of the DWI analysis when we go through the step one, step two, and then step three. Um, in the next few weeks, we'll go through some detail here, but um, what we are going to use here mostly right now this week, or maybe next week is still from the, the step uh, T3. So open the file, the one millimeter template, which you can also download from today's uh, web page, or either you can just drag it in, open the file, then in this interface, you can see the slides within this fifth file. So in the fifth file, the key things here is like, in addition to all the anisotropy or color directional map or the isotropy map, there is a fiber direction associated with each voxel. So if you just zoom them in, looking on the left-hand side, left -hand, here for each of the voxel, there will be a fiber orientation. So that's the end product of the DW analysis before we go for further fiber tracking. So fiber tracking algorithm just follow those fiber orientation. And that's the content of the fifth file. But here we use fifth file just to bring in an MNI space. And for the assignment, the purpose to kind of upgrading those tracks and assign it to the ICBN's adult space. So here, next step, we need to create a gray meter mask so that those outside the mask will be eliminated. So if you click on here, here there is an address button, which we mentioned in the week one, allow you to bring in different address at different region. And one of the address is the brain segmentation, which we could bring in the gray meter. So this gray matter address will allow me to um, remove those backgrounds and then reassign those regions we created. So from the constellation we just created, we could further load it in. So this rendered address Parcelation, all the regions will be loaded in. So you can see here on the left-hand side, there's a list of all the regions. So that's how the Nifty file works. So Nifty file could store the scatter image or most often we use it to store regions. Those regions would have different parcelation labels. And when you load it in DSS this, this Studio, you could see those parcelation. And down here, we could switch to the eight edge view so we could see the region edges. So the first one is the gray meter mask. So you see here, I can check or uncheck it. Oh, I selected it, you will be highlighted by white and each of the region will be fo followed after I load it in here. And the next step is simply bring in the, uh, all the region to the, according to the first one, using the function under modify region or to first. So this step will take quite a while. And what it's doing is like, it would um, assign all the region to the first region. So you could try it after this course um, and then see how it works. Or maybe you have already tried it in the assignment. Then you will create a new contour based on, on the mask in the fir first row, which is the square meter. So hopefully you get the, the same results. And then we will switch to today's content. It's just a brief overview of last week's assignments. So let's go back to the agenda, the X3, which is we would focus on 
biometric tracks. And we were wondering why we would talk about this because and the main reason is um, I have a discussion forum on this a studio website and a lot of time I would receive questions and then I figure out like a lot of time when users get the results, say for example, you know, in a few following weeks, we may have differential chartography, we may have correlational chartography, and we may have a finding in the white matter region. And the key is how to identify tracks within the white matter region. Usually identify regions in the gray matter is much easier. We know that there's frontal lobe, there's parietal lobe, there's sulci, drivers, they allow us to easily identify uh, maybe the functional MR activation region. If there's a mask, we know where it is. But in the white matter, there is sometimes not that trivial. Um, and uh, there will not, not having a lot of textbook teaching how to do this. So this today is the purpose, and I'm hoping to get everyone's um, tech home information is how to identify white matter track in when you get a result, say in the following week, I got a, a track showing up, which is significantly correlated with uh, a finding, a scalar variable or and after the treatment, and how can I identify what track it is? So that, that's the purpose of, of the part. So the picture I'm going to talk about first is in this paper, review paper, to just give you an overview of the category of white matter tracks. So there are other white matter tracks, even including some uh, cradle nerve and the tracks in the brainstem. Um, but all of them could be categorized in several categories, which are listed in the following. Here I listed commercial pathway, which is the big category, the largest pathway, and then following followed by association pathway and projection pathway. Then there are also cerebellum pathway, brainstem pathway, cranial nerve. Interestingly, most of the new anatomy books focus predominantly on projection pathway. Also, brain pathway, brainstem pathway. Rarely a textbook focus on association pathway, but this is one of the most important things. A lot of brain study, we we need to know and to figure out to identify pathway under this category. So to help with today's identification learning, when you download this one millimeter file. You can open it in step T3. So let's bring the files up here. So the first thing you download it will be the SCP 1065 one millimeter. So this file was created by averaging the thousands of young adult um, SCP data. So it's more like a representative pathway that we helping us uh, learning the neural anatomy. So just open it here. You can just drag it in or double click here or open it in step T3. Those will be the same step. So once you bring it up, you will see the interface, which I just showed. Then there's a file. I will recommend you download the simplified atlas and labels. When you download it, you include a chartography file which ends with .tt.gzip, and then the track label file. So those are the pathway being labeled here. And then you can, in this studio inter interface, under the track menu, open tracks, and then we can open the file we just downloaded, which is ICB-152 adults. So the, this file is labeled using automatic fiber tracking, which based on new anatomist labeling. So this one is a simplified version, so allow you to easily see what's going, uh, what's the tracks here. For example, the first one, upgrade fasciculars. If you check it or uncheck it, you can see where it goes in the 3D view. And on the slice, drop this, 
you could switch to the T1. So this one is the ICP, ICBM on 92. Um, the, so this one is the average population T1. It will see where it goes and where it is located within the white matter. So in the, within the, the list of the track we loaded, it includes association pathway and also projection pathway. So when you go through those, this, let's talk about each of the pathways. So the first we need to see is the general idea of the commercial pathway, association pathway, and the projection pathway. So, and there are several tracks fall under the category, but but these three categories is the main classification. And an oh, easy way to understand it is like, if we see this picture, so this view is a coronal view. If you look at Rita DSS Studio, if you look at this way, they were corresponding to this picture. And here, pay attention to here, where in this picture, there are green, is fiber, red, and blue. So the blue is projection pathway. So usually projection pathway, most of them go in the Z direction, which is the cross of several slices. They've been coming from the brainstem or sediments and reaching the cortex. So if you have a pathway that go in the Z direction, the likely, I would say the 80% or 90% chance is the, it is one of the projection pathway. Commercial pathway is much easier. Um, it's come connecting left and right cortical surface. It's, it's under the corpus callosum. Um, most of the time when we see this track, it's just corpus callosum. Um, there could be anterior commercial, but the pathway is much smaller in human. And then the greenish pathway goes anterior to posterior. So if I have a pathway going uh, from anterior to posterior, likely is one of the association pathway. And one key features here is the projection pathway works like more like an input and output of the human brain. So the, the way to really identify that is any pathway that connects from cortical surface to either sediments, basal ganglion or brainstem nuclei, then there's one of the projection pathway. So the kind of definitions here, pathway connecting cortical regions to basal ganglion or brainstem nuclei is a projection pathway. So the, the function of projection pathway is more like output the brain signals or taking a uh, signal from the peripheral nerve. So it's more like the input output interface or the human brain. And their function is, is mostly defined by where it's connecting to. So if you go to the sediments, then you, you, you realize it, you will have functions there to set up make functions, which serve like a hub and then integrating the information. If you go to a motor cortex and it, it involves motor function, sensory cortex involves sensory function. So for projection pathway, the identification may not be easy, but once you identify it, knows where it goes, where it goes in, it's an input output. So where it inputs or where it outputs, you know the function. And identifying it is I see if it connects to the basal ganglion, could it goes to salamus, putamen, striatum, or the brain stand. Um, if it is, then there's one of the projection pathway. So some example of projection pathway if I to bring up here is I say, for example, coital spinal tract. It coming from motor regions and then go down to spine or either cortical striatal pathway. So let me remove the outer fasciculars. So this one kind of striatum to other cortical surfaces. And also the sedimentary pathway, sedimentary radiation. So from sediments to cort cortical surface, um, some paper called cortical sedimentary pathway. And the name here, we just call it sediment radiation. Other examples like optic radiation, 
it's also a projection pathway. So the LGN, if we view it kind of like a, a part of the sediments, then it's from the LGN kind of nuclei regions to the cortical surface. So this one is also a projection pathway, even though it goes kind of anterior to posterior. So those are some pathways uh, under the projection pathway category. The main idea is that here, the sediments, if we can bring it here up here. So I can bring the sediments left and right, putainment, locus pallidus, caught that. So those are the, where, um, there are those projection paths that goes to, or either the brain stem. So you see how this one com comes from the um, LGN to visual cortex, or either the synaptic radiation or striatum. So that's the idea of the projection pathway. So you see a pathway that well goes to the basal ganglion or go down to the brain stem. Well, it's a part of the projection pathway. And then next uh, to identify its name, it's just most of the name is just telling where it goes to or coming from. Um, unless it's like the optic radiation, which we know is the, the visual signal relay. Um, for example, the salamic, if we go to the salamus to cortex, then it's a cortical salamic or the salamic radiation. If it goes from a striatum to cortex, then it's a cortical striatal pathway. Um, and then from the spine to cortex, it could be cortical spinal tract, cortical bubble tract, or cortical pontine tract. So cortical pontine tract goes from cortex to brain stem. So you end up with a brain stem region. So this is the projection pathway. And most of them gets identified here by the starting region and the end region. So let's click on uncheck all to uncheck all of them. So projection pathway, the key to identify it to see if it connects to brain cell ganglion or the brain stem nuclei. Identifying commercial pathway also straightforward, whether it's part of the corpus callosum or interior commercial, it goes from left to right. Much challenging one here is a social pathway. Um, it's not really told or a lot in the neural anatomy textbook, so I will focus here. And the key to identify associate pass pathway here attached two figures from a recent paper on nature communication. The first one you need to, um, when you want to identify pathway under associate pathway category is to bring out the coronal, sec coronal section. So in down here in the coronal sections, most of the associate, uh, association pathway goes anterior to posterior. And they will have different location where you make a coronal sections. For example, here, within just one coronal section, you see most of the association pathway located at different location. So the, a quick way to separate is from the top and bottom. So we usually call the upper part is the dorsal part. So in the language dual um, stream model, we have a dual dorsal stream or ventral stream is also under the same paradigm. So the dorsal part include all the pathway listed here. IF means upper fasciculus, SLF, superior longitudinal fasciculus, and then the ventral part, uh, the unsafe fasciculus and IFOF. And here's a list of it. And to understand that there's another category system um, at first view, you may see complicated, but most of them, it's just singular here. So it's the greenish part that con contain most of the singular connection. So this one sort of like a multiple connection highway that connecting different surfaces. If we go from frontal to parietal, almost prefrontal to parietal, or even down to parietal, hippocampal regions. So here, even though association pathway may seem very complicated at first sight, but a lot of them just carry under the singular system here. 
So the singular system and the ventral part is just unsignal fasciculars and I4. So unsignal fasciculars is like a C shape from the anterior temporal to prefrontal. And I4 is like a long pathway from the prefrontal to occipital. And then the remaining two part is arcuate fasciculars and their association. Um, for example, the SLF2 and SLF3, let's include it. And this category also roughly corresponds to their function. So the first category, the big AF, arcuate fascicular system, including SLF2 and 3 and FAT, which is frontal SLAM, all involve heavily in language function. So this one's language function. And the other two also involve some of the language function, but they also mostly maybe involve like reading. So like it's not a core language function, but it's kind of accessory or either some special uh, other information that's under the red color here. So it's middle, middle longitudinal longitud uh, fasciculars or VOF, IOF like, may involve in like, reading functions. The unsafe fascicular I4 that is called the ventral pathway may also involve some language function, but not that critical. Um, so within those functions involve a lot of more high cortical functions. So if you to look at it in DSS Studio, let's bring that the one we have. Of course, the most important one is arcuate fasciculus. So arcuate fasciculus, the way to identify is like a big C shape from the prefront, uh, from the frontal to temporal. So temporal may include superior temporal or inferior temporal. So this one is the key. It says if you see this C, C shape of the fiber arc here, is uh, it should be telling really really these arcuate fasciculus. And then the one associated with it is SLF2, SLF3. So you can see how that goes very closely, but without going downward to the temporal. And then another one is frontal aslam. So those involve heavily in the, in the language function. So that's one of the, key part here, the language function of the brain structure, that's four key pathway in the, the, the big category of the first part. Then the ventral pathway, we call it I4 and unsafe fasciculus. So let's see here. So you see, they also go closely side by side, but unsignals only curve toward the temporal region. So we can check the slice here. If you go anterior to the temporal, temporal region, both paths will connect to the prefrontal. So that's one of the key to identify them here. Now let's uncheck all of them. And there are also smaller pathways that goes like mid, middle longitude, you know, for circulars, temporal parietal aslan tracks, or VOF. So those are more like some association pathway. Go side by side with one of the largest ones, ILF. So you may take some time then to look at what each of them goes from there to another. I see in the chat some of the, you have um, the format problem. I would see if I can troubleshooting it later. And then finally in the last big category is singulum. So one of the key things about singulum is it's a, it's a complicated category of several tracks. 
So you can see some of them goes from frontal to prohippocampal, some of them goes frontal to parietal. So imagine the singular is like a big singular gyrus, including a lot of different pathways. It may come from part of it and then end it somewhere. So, and this form also forms the limbic system, part of the limbic system. So if you see a pathway appears up in, in the medial side of the brain, and then connect somewhere, maybe from the frontal parietal or parietal to temporal, it's actually part of the singular pathway. So I highly recommend spend some time to familiarize, especially the association pathway. And here it's just provided a list. And then when you check each of them, if you have this hierarchical system um, in your mind, it will also help you understand their functions and their, their um, relative location and relation. So the last part I listed here are some white matter region, and usually they are they include multiple pathways. So the reason I put it not pathway is I say for example the internal capsule is a big region that includes a lot of different pathways passing through. The same for corona radiata in, includes coical striatal pathway, coical saline pathway, um, and goes to pitamens striatum. So it, Usually those terms refer to a big white matter region. It's not a pathway. So it's different from those pathway naming category. And this we need to pay attention to. And also if you say I have a finding in the internal capsule, it's just not um, well defined in terms of which pathway you involved. Because in the internal capsule, there, could, there are sensory pathway, motor pathway, or either pathway from the cinemas to cortex. Uh, it's a big uh, five meter area. Okay, so the, the uh, next half of this course, we would work out some virtual dissection. And the way we could do is that we could dissect, manually dissect whole brain tracks and, and then to isolate all the pathway or some of the pathway we mentioned upper here, either projection or association. And also I would introduce the track menu. So by the way, if you cannot open the fifth file downloaded, another way you can um, open is go to this studio interface and then I'll, and then set that the open ICBM 152 adult template. It's not a, this one is a two millimeter template, not the one millimeter one I just used, but you can still use it. You can, once you select it, click on step T3, then you would bring you up a smaller size version of the ICBM. So this one is the two millimeter resolution one. Hopefully this one also work out for you. And here to make, uh, it's simple, I'll just use the two millimeter one for demonstration, but you can also still use the one millimeter one, which I used to demonstrate the anatomy. And the first part I'm going to talk about is the edit menu, which would be very helpful for editing those tracks. So before I editing those tracks, what you could do is you can just load the tracks you just downloaded, or you just simply click Fiber tracking. And DSS Studio will give you a whole bunch of tracks as shown here. And the functions under the edit menu allow you to manually select or delete or modify this, those tracks. So the first function is the select. So the select here means I say, for example, if I want to select the the pathway may be here. The way we, we could do it is click on the select function or either use the shortcut in Windows is Control S and the map is Command S. Once you click it, then you can see the cursor before across. And then what you can do is press 
the left mouse button, drag it, and you see a red line coming down, and then release it. Then from, the, from this drawing line, DSS Studio will select the tracks that visually intercept with this line. So let's do it again. Control S, press the left button, drag it, and release it. And then you could do it, you could do it more, uh, repeatedly. So I can do this like this, refining each of the tracks until I get this one is Ancient Fascicular. And you can press undo or control Z to undo all your operation. So let's do it again. Let's set another one. Control S, select. You can switch to a different view and keep selecting until you find what you want it. So here, once I narrow it down, well, it's maybe here is part of the track that involved in the Cope's Colossum. Control Z, then it's undo all the things. So we have select, of course, the same will be delete. So I can delete the track I selected, so it's Control D. I can remove this part, or either I can remove part of it. So a combination of select and delete allow you to work out a virtual dissection. Say I want to dissect arcuate fasciculars. So the way I, I see the chat question why I'm doing this, so the way doing this is say I, if I want to visually select a pathway, you can use the selection line to narrow down the pathway you are going to look at. So here I just work out a several selection and also delete the track that doesn't. This one I use delete to remove those tracks. It moves here. Some may be looking not, not the right in terms of the archive particulars. So for example, I want to remove those parts. It's just it's delete. So a combination of selection and delete allow you to narrow down the pathway and work out a virtual dissection here. Say for example, here, maybe, maybe not the right pathway here, maybe there's fabric tracking going wrong. And what I can do is just remove it. And then just give you close to the accurate fasciculars. There are also our function pruning doesn't involve the, the same. It's just once you click it, then you will in, use DSS Studio, Studio's building pruning function. So once you click it, then you just remove, help you remove the track. So the effect would happen right away. Say for example, there could be some noisy tracks here. And once you click pruning, then you just remove some of the track that may appear um, noisy or just not going with other the shortcut is control t so what i could do is do it multiple times so i do a lot of premium you will see become cleaner cleaner and eventually give you the whole overview of the agri particulars so i see a question can i put this with a white metal atlas yeah sure so you can go to the white metal atlas part there's a white metal atlas called scp842 and, and you will say, well, does this go well with accurate fasciculars? So let's find if I can accurate fasciculars here, edit. And then you will see if this region is coming in. So you see roughly corresponding to this. And also for confirming, so say for example, there's a projection pass where you want to see if it's intercept with sediments or pretainment to confirm it, just bring it from the others. Then there's a function for painting. Say for example, we have a track that I would want to label using different color. Then that's what the painting is doing. Say for example, let's work out um, a pathway for 
for example. Right now, let's look at it. This one is I4 and Ancinet. So Ancinet goes from prefrontal to the anterior temporal. The I4 go to the occipital. And I would say, well, I want to color them in two different color, how I can do it. So let me get closer to it. So I want to, so the steps end here, then I can say paint. I just want to paint this pathway by red. So once you involve it, you, you can, you will see that the track color change and then the other would have other assigned color showing that here. So you see, for example, and the one, the default color is more like a yellowish color. And just let you know, there are rendering options under the track rendering. So if you expand this menu, you can not visualizing or showing it up. And the key here is switching to the assigned color to directional. So by default, it's directional color. And if you want to see the one you just assigned and go to the assigned color. And then for the rest of them, I can just assign with a different color, maybe like the blue. So you have blue and red, like this one. And you can change back to the original color. So Control P, the pen function allows you to pen those pathways for visualization of creating figures. Still, there are functions that cut, they would allow you to cut pathways. Say, for example, I want to just analyze a segment of it. I can cut the pathway. So let's go back to the directional color. Say I want to chop up only a segment of it. What you can do is use Control X or the cut function. So this way just cutting. See here, I can cut this segment and then set it in the middle. Others just remove it. And then you can see the intersection or cross section of a pathway. Let's do it again. So we can use control D, go back to the first version. Say I want to cut in this section to see the cross section, then just cut it here and make a selection here. And you can see this cross section. And of course, you can see here, not just the assigned color, you can look at the anisotropy. So here I, I can visualize the, the QA is one of the anisotropy using this color map and see where the value is higher and lower in the cross section. Um, just a different way to look at the data, more quantitative way. Also, you can cut by slice. So the slice can be cut by the Z slice, Y slice, and Z slice. And those slice defined by the slice location here. Say for example, I move a slice here, the chrono slice, maybe here, I want to cut from here. This is cut by slice. So this is the Y direction is cut Y plus. So you see how the things goes. And the last one is move objects. So the move object function has a shortcut control A, allow you to move most of the objects in the 3D view, for example, the slice. If you click on control A, grab the slice and you can drag it. So this is the control A function, or in, if you have a region, so let's, that's what we mentioned about drawing those regions. And you can also move those regions using Control A to move it. Let me see if I can move it here. So I can see here it's moving, but it's not updating. Maybe I need to fix it. Just let you know if you come across any bug like this and just let me know and I, I will quickly see if I can fix it somewhere. So ideally you should be moving like this one with those regions.
Any question? I see the chat. My cut just generate vertical lines. I did not remove the segments. So let me redo the cut function. So to show the, the cross section, after cutting it, you need to select only part of it. So say, for example, if you cut it here, it literally just cut the string line and make a gap of it. And then the next step you need to see the cross section is control S, set that the left part or set that the right part. Hopefully that worked out for you. So those are the, the functions under the track menu. So a combination of it will be very useful. Say for example, if I just want to see the whole burn tracks and I can just cut within a section to see how this how we visualize with a slice. I can say, I can just cut by Z plus and then overlap it with a slice section to look at the new anatomy. And also there's a shortcut for moving slice. There's a D and E in the keyboard. So I can also quickly move in the slice like here. And then this will help you to understand local tracks and orientation over there with the um the t1 structure slices so here that this hyperlink for the shortcuts i highly recommend you go through it a bit like the q and a is the moving set to slice say for example if you press the q or press the a and you move the set to slice W and S, shortcut for moving chrono slice. E and D, move the SL slice. And X, Z, and C are shortcuts for different views. So if you use this uh, familiarized with it, you can quickly go to different view and move the slice at the location you want it without uh, using your mouse to move it. Mouse wheel to remain from our right double click in the region. So there are some of it and I highly recommend also the shortcut for track editing. You can also save different view. Highly recommend that you, you familiarize each of them. So here we could practice some selection. Um, you can start doing it. Um, there are different three different difficulty level. Usually for commercial pathway, it's the easiest one. You just select the middle. Association pathway, a little challenging. Possession pathway, I say, is most challenging because you need to pinpoint to where it's located. Um, for some of them, it may be easy, but a lot of them is not that easy. So just to show here, say, for example, for a Corpse Colossus, you can just have a selection in the middle and then pull in a little bit. I can remove the part that not on the high cortical. Let's select it, select it again. So repeat it doing it, then you can get the password you wanted and remove the part that doesn't look right. And one advanced function that they could use or sometimes would be useful is that you see some password that going here and then maybe deviate a little bit and going up. If you want to select selectively just removing those deviated tracks without hurt selecting others, there's a function that can be used is the right click of the mouse to selecting it. So in the, in the con, selection what we usually use is just left mouse button and try to set that this one but you see here if i set that here i will also set the others maybe just a little bit touching this line so one way you could do is doing this step but use the right mouse button and you can see that the those intercept with the larger angle will be selected so you could check 
try it here. If you use the left click of the mouse button to draw the line, then you would just, anyone just touching this line will be selected. But if you use right mouse button, maybe I just go here. The most of them should be crossing at a larger angle. This will be useful for this kind of like selecting those fibers. Say for example, this fiber deviated a bit. If I don't want to set it a background, then one way I can use a right click and make the angle like this one, then I can remove it. So it's using right click. So control D, it did, but I use right mouse button. Then you will selectively se removing those with intersect with a larger angle. So there's a different using the left mouse button and the right mouse button. If you use a, the right mouse button to select a track or delete a track, DSS Studio would consider the intersecting angle, larger angle be selected, otherwise the others will be ignored. So that's one small trick here. So next part is region-based filtering. So this will be useful for selecting projection pathway. So instead of manually set it, selecting a track, all we could do is use a region to help selecting or removing. Say for example here, the Cops Colors and I selected, you can visualize on this region window. And I can draw region and use this region to filter this track. So the way to do it is you select it using the ROI means that selecting tracks that passing through it. ROA means the opposite, just removing track that passing through it. So let's try the ROI one. And under the track menu, I can filter track by ROI, ROA, or end region means it had the track has to end within the region. So here is applying ROI, then we can use the region to filter the track. So just doing it. Let me move the track that I, I can move the regions somewhere. And then filter it afterward. Any questions here? So this is the region-based filtering function. So the last part of it, I would like to introduce the automatic fiber tracking. So explain the color, what color represents here. Usually in cartography, those color, we call it directional color. So when it goes in the Z direction, it's more gray, bluish going anterior posterior and greenish, left and right and it's right. So the RGB correspond, corresponding to X, Y, Z. Um, so this is called, called the directional color. The same as here. So we know the direction of the local fiber orientation. So automatic fiber tracking is in the um, DSS Studio that allow you to um, use a built-in atlas to help you um, map a particular pathway. So the function is under auto track. So you can click here, and then there will be a, a list of menu that's showing up. And you can set it the one, say for, say for example, I want to map archive fasciculars and create fiber tracking. Now what DSS2 is doing is it would more like work out a whole bunch tracking, but filter based on the building address. And the building address is defined by neural anatomist. So it's more like a, uh, a building neural anatomist within DSS Studio to help you map a pathway. So for, for example, we want to map singulum. Instead of doing virtual dissection, you can ask DSS Studio to map it for you. For example, the frontal aslam, you can just click on it. 
and DSS Studio will map the pathway. And just that you know, this function may not be perfect. A lot of time you see here, maybe some noise, Z fiber coming up, some deviated fiber coming up. So if, if in case you want to create a, a new anatomy figures that will be removing those, then that's also the time you would need manual virtual dissections using the selection or removing function. Say for example here, I want to remove this and I can just use the delete function to delete it. So here I can use the right click to remove those deviated greenish fiber. So here some greenish fiber, I can use it right click to remove it. It's not sort of frontal as line go from superior frontal to inferior frontal. I can, once I remove, using the right click of, of the manual delete of the tracks, then we can create um, the FAT tracks. that will be close, very close to what anatomy will show you. So the remaining time I will introduce the track manning and go, quickly go through each of the function. So you can open the track, or save the track in different space, or either save a long track index that allow you to analyze it later. Check all and uncheck all, that means that you need to check or uncheck all the tracks here to visualize it. You can merge the track all together and delete the track currently you select here. You can convert tracks to our eyes. Sometimes this will be useful for a lot of different purposes. Say for example, I want to convert aquifascicular tracks to our eye. Click on it, then you will see this region menu has the aquifascicular showing up. So it's converting streamline to voxels. Track profile allow you to study the track uh, along track index. If you're interested, there's documentation about the details. So you can study what the along track, say for example, along the Y direction, what's the anisotropy distribution. And here, not just anisotropy, but any index included in, you can insert a slice and then analyze it here. Statistic maybe uh, will be used quite a lot. So once you click on statistic, DSS Studio will use it, use the, the tracks to get all the information, including the number of the tracks, and followed by shape matrices. What the, what's the elongation? What's the span? What's the diameter of the tracks? Followed by anisotropy. So this is the anisotropy average along these tracks. Of course, if you check on multiple tracks, then you can get a statistics. And what I usually did is I have to bring that Excel and then pass it to the Excel sheet. So I can once, once I get a track statistic results, I can copy the results and then pass it to the Excel. Can I bring it? Any questions here? Oops. So today we go through all the track menu and then also mentioned about different track category. Um, there's a Simon at the bottom and allow the focus on some detail function that manually segment the tracks and using the pen function. So I'll stay longer uh, after this course. Um, I will end it here. Feel free to ask questions um, or just log off. And thank you for your participation.
but when you're not obligated to submit assignment to me, um, those assignments just encourage you to get more about how to use DSS Studio. It is entirely voluntary, um, but feel free to let me know if something doesn't work out. But I would highly recommend you, you work out an assignment by yourself because there are a lot of functions that you can really know how to use it and doing the assignment uh, work. I'll stay for another like 15 minutes, 10 or 15 minutes. If you have questions, feel free to bring over um, data or anything, not just limiting to today's course. And then thank you for your time. And also if you have any recommendation or any topic you would like me to emphasize in the future course, feel free to email me. If you, if you want to show your data, you can email me your data or either I can let you share your screen. Okay, I see two, two questions here. How to run the assign Ubuntu? Um, I didn't use Ubuntu, but there are Ubuntu version. So if you go to the Studio website, there are pre-built binary. Ideally, you need to download the one that match your version. If it still doesn't work out, then you need to go to GitHub so you can go to the GitHub website of DSS Studio and then try to install it based on the package uh, script. So here, if you use Linux, Ubuntu or other version there, are, if you go to GitHub under my name, Frank Yee at DSS Studio, there's a folder called build packages. Say for example, if you are using Ubuntu 22.04, then the Docker file, are those commands that allow you to install the same. So what we what I did to create those binary, just follow this step. Started from one to 22 or four, uh, and then install the required package. So the challenge here for most of the Linux version is that uh, sometimes you may miss a, a library that you cannot, and then the, the program just not started. And uh, likely if you just work out this step, then you can just use the binary. Okay. Um, so Smith said, um, if you want, you could share your screen. Let me see if I can end my sharing. Um, if you want to, if you download Ubuntu version, there is binary, you just call the binary and hopefully it just work out, but it depends on you, whether you're using different GUI system. For the recorded version, I would post it, I will send that to everyone through email. Uh, ideally, I would download the video and then upload it to a YouTube channel. Um, for those behind firewall that can access YouTube, um, I don't have a solution here, but hopefully I can find out a way to get you. I see another questions here. Maybe you should next time see that the fiber kind of to um you use two ROI. Yeah. The the best will be just two ROI, then it, that's the ideal. But Next week's course, I would talk more about the region-based analysis, and they will show you how where you should use end regions or ARI. Okay, so for um, can we do differential chartography for group analysis? Is it ten disease? Um, for this one, it will be correlational chartography because it's more like a correlational type of analysis involving group. But the, but differential chartography also works, but you will need to compare each subject with all the control. And then once you get a result for each subject, 
know, he is such an mean patient and you could um, maybe say, get the track bottom and then do the analysis forward. But credential track target may be more appropriate. So Simisa, you could see if you can share screen. Uh, let me stop my sharing first. Okay, I can see your share screen. So here's the, your acquisition, I see. So you created a SLC file. Um, you could unmute yourself and then see what the, what the question you have here. Uh, do we have to do files after that open? Which file I should use for the further processing? Um, if I see it right here, you already, okay. You can open the AP, um, DRR90A AP.SRC, yeah, here. So this is SLC file, we can open it in step T2 in the DSI studio. And second. So open this SRC file in a step T2. Okay. I am opening it. Uh, uh, if you can share the screen to DSS Studio, then I see what the, if you are doing it right. Okay. So one question, how do you move object up and down the 3D viewer on Mac, no middle button? So the control A will allow you to set that, but just realize that the, maybe some of the visualization doesn't look right. Um, I'll try to fix it, but you could ideally um, click control A and then set that the slides and they can move it or set a region. I will double check the region moving function. It seems that working in the most recent version. So that K, hopefully that answer your questions. Um, if you're still not able to do it on Mac, let me know. I will see if I can modify it. I see the right message about the NDA uh, of the pass. Um, sure. Okay, so so means I see your screen here. You said that the AP. Um, wait. You need Sorry? to click on step. Sorry, you need to click on the step T two reconstruction. T two reconstruction. Yes. Uh, nope, not this one. The diffusion my analysis tab. Yep. Step T2 reconstruction. Yes. And then set the SRC file. Uh, yep. Let me see which one. AP. The AP one. This one. Yes. So if you have AP, then you need to. Then you could, now we need to correct for top up. So corrections on the top menu, there's a correction. Yes. Top up, AD, top up, AD. Yeah. This one is AP then, oh, you already did that. So yeah, it's a, I already did that. Sorry. Okay, <laughs> once you finish it, then you run reconstruction. Click Excuse up. me? Run reconstruction button on the lower left. Go down, go down, the wrong reconstruction. On the right, on the right, move to the right. Yes, almost close, right, yes. <laughs> Click on this one, yes, you got Thank it. Thank you. So is it the one that, that stopped you? <laughs> yeah. I oh, I'm sorry one. about that. Yeah, once you click on it, it then it creates a fit file. Okay. Yeah, say fit file created, then you can okay. click on step T3. Yes. This okay. is for AP only, then PA 
I have to do separately? No, you don't have because the correction already combined AP and PA. Okay. Even though it's just AP, it already combined. So we can open this. Yeah. Open this, this one. one. Yes. Great. You think it's okay. You can click on fiber tracking to see if Hoban track looks okay. On the right, step T3D. On the right, second. type fiber tracking. The fiber tracking button. You see it? One second. Fiber tracking. This one? Uh, no. Step oh, T3D. Here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the right. Yes. Fiber okay. tracking. Then you can get Hoban tra track. It looks nice. Yeah. yeah. And you can try the auto track function. Once you click on the auto track, okay. then you can map out your particular sound function. Auto track, okay. Yeah. And so you can, it will go through a normalization because here is native space of the subject. Okay. And then say you can track aqua fasciculus or set any tracks um, and then map it from here. Yes. And then click fiber tracking again. That's it. Yes. Okay, thank you. Cool. Thank you so much. No problem. And I will follow your class today. Then it will be almost like this, like the today's class I have to. I have to follow another steps using today's class, right? Sorry, I didn't get your question. Could you repeat it again? Uh, after this step, I have to follow today's class for the uh, next step. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You're right. right? Oh, okay. Either you can you can check out today's assignment. Yes. And then and do the same. Or oh, either there is a fifth file that can be downloaded for today's okay. assignment. But you can, uh, today, you can do it uh, in your subject. That's that should be fine. okay. In my case, that HCP file is not downloading. And uh, I have used ICBM template too. Then also it is not down, uh, not loading. Oh. Okay. I don't know why it's so. By my data works, but my data works. Thank you so much. No problem. If it's a problem, you can just screen, uh, catch screen, and then send email to me. I was I will try to figure out the cause. Uh, some user participant also report some problem today, but I I, I will see if I can figure it out and then solve it. Okay, okay, thank you. Any other questions? Uh, hello, you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yes, any question? Okay. Yes, I have some question. If you can um, give us some uh, direction how to set the algorithm to have some uh, reproducible uh, uh, parameters about, I'm talking about FA, uh, AD, about because how do you set the algorithm to have statistical analysis about the diffusion parameters of, of the tracks? So you're asking how to, what the meaning of the parameter or could you be more specific yes. about? Yeah, uh, wait, I will open the SI so I have a bit more. Uh, so wait. did you mean that what's the meaning, meaning of those parameters here? Or either, mm. what would be your question? Yes, uh, just can you, when you set the, uh, wait, I will open uh, one fiber tracking. Okay, the tracking parameters. Yes. How do you set them? Like the angular threshold, uh, the oh, step size. I see. <laughs> so here you see if I click options, restore tracking setting, everything back to the default setting. So okay. most of the time you could just use the default. So here the zero is not meaning that it's just zero. Zero means it's a randomly selective between a, a range. 
angular threshold when you input zero, there's also a range of it. Zero, the same for the, so the first three here, zero is a default parameter, allow DSS Studio to work out uh, a more like a pro probabilistic parameter sampling. So you won't be stick with just one parameter. And the benefit of it uh, is that uh, you, you, it gets you a better chance to map a comprehensive set of cartography. Um, so I, I would recommend just put zero on the first three. And for the rest, the, this will be the minimum lens. Maximum lens usually just serve like a threshold uh, to eliminate that smaller track or the track that's just go just too, too long. And then it's just a hard, hard threshold to remove longer or shorter tracks. And here the terminative oh. is that if you run the fiber tracking and how many tracks you want to get, uh, sometimes we change this and to get, say I, I want to get um, maybe here just 5,000 track, then you just get 5,000 track. Um, for details, there are each of the parameter details on the DSS Studio website. Um, I recommend you to check each of them and what they're meaning. Yeah. I, I look at them. Just uh, I was just want to ask if uh, there is some uh, suggested parameters. Just because we are looking to have reproducible uh, data about yeah. the, the corticospinal tract, to have yes. like uh, reproducible data between patients. Yes. And if, uh, for example, there is also other option like pruning, uh, or. Yes. Uh, do you think that the normalization on the standard volume is like uh, degrading the, the the diffusion parameters? Like for example, FA, a fractional anisotropy, mm -hmm. or uh, yes, because um, I would say there is no like one answer to all the questions. It really depends on your, your research purpose. If you want to have good reproducibility, then using the default parameter would be a good choice because it's simple as a distribution of a parameter, not just one. Um, if you stick to just one parameter, say angular threshold stick to 16 parameter, but some people's brain may be more uh, oval, some may be more elongated. So, one parameter of a subject does not necessarily equal to the same parameter in another subject. So the reason for this, uh, like a right range or random sample of parameter is just to cope with that, that one. Same for the tracking threshold, the inner source of each threshold, the step size, those just to make it more adaptive to many subjects because uh, you can uh, say, well, step size of one millimeter in one subject is just the same as another. Uh, if the brain size is different, ideally the step size may need to be different. Um, so that's the argument behind it. But most of the time you just use the default parameter, it should be good. Okay, thank you. So any questions here? Feel free to ask questions or I'll stay a little bit longer. And if you have data that cannot be, uh, be shown in this public meeting, I was, you can send me direct message um, and I will send you another room link that you can log in later. And, and we can talk about it. So there's one. Okay, thank you very much. When you share talking about this, uh, let me send you the another room link. Let me see if I can find it. Any questions?
if you have time, yeah, can maybe, we just try? Maybe I can have the so, final question about uh, how to install the uh, the DSS Studio on uh, Ubuntu system. Um, the thing is, I have downloaded and have uh, unzipped this file, but I don't still don't know how to launch it uh, specifically. Um, Maybe can I share the screen so that you can see? Yep, yeah, yeah, sure. Here. Sure, let me. Uh, let me share this again. Let me stop uh, my share. Wait a second, I think it should be this. Can you see it? Yes. Uh, yes, this is an overview about the NZIP files, then how to launch the app. Then. You are using Ubuntu or Linux? Yes, uh, Ubuntu Linux system. OK. Um, you just call it DSI underscore studio, see if that worked out. Uh, once again? Just call the DSI underscore mm. studio. So there's an executive file. Let's see. Yeah, and I don't know. Command not found. Is it the same folder? You mean uh, the yes. doc, doc backslash? Doc doc slash slash DSI yeah. studio. I think I also tried already, but it's still it not. Ah. You guess? Yes. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I can play around later. Cool, cool. Mm -hmm. Happy to solve, solve it for you. Six. Then I can stop sharing. Any questions here? I just have a very short question, probably yeah. more related to last week, uh, uh, but uh, unfortunately I couldn't make it. No I just wonder whether you have a short uh, tutorial video tell us how to use this software to do segmentation. For example, I may need the you know uh, individual participants hippocampus or amygdala. It is an easy way to use this software because previously we use other software to do that. Thank you. I see. So let me share my screen. So if I get your uh, purpose right, you would like to segment the like, brain regions, and I right? Yes, individual participants. So we load their oh, okay. image, then we will manually get the structure. Yes. So that that would be the same as it, the same as opening in the template. So once you get a fit file, the first thing you need to get a fit file for the subject. Mm -hmm. And once you get a fit file in the subject, then you could go to the editors. Uh, or maybe let me find individual files so you can have more confidence of what it looks like. Um, let me see if I can find one quickly. Oh. Just a minute. Um, say, for example, there is assignment. This one is individual subjects file. I can download it. Mm -hmm. And once I download it, I can open it in step T3. So takes a minute. Let me download it here. Close this one. Still downloading. Okay, so once I download it, I can open it in DSS Studio. So this is why I open it. So you see here it's individual subjects, right? Mm. Mm. And here just click on the address and DSS Studio work out a, a special normalization, try to warp beta with space, space to uh, MNI space. Mm -hmm. After that, you see there's a list of adders you could do. Let's say this brain segmentation adders. You can just add all of them. So you could take a look of all the things that have been listed. Or either you can use the search function. So say, for example, I want to use that's animus. Uh -huh. And here I can set them as step and right, determine step and right. So you see how that aligns with the subject's image. 
I see here. So any regions you can load it here. Mm -hmm. um, even the Roman area, like this one, you just print it in. I see, I see. Any questions here? Thank you. Yeah, I see the check. There's also different tools. Um, that'll be good. You can use free server tool, or any other tool to bring those regions in. Um, the performance could be better than DSS Studio because the DSS, DSS Studio, the registration is based on the source of and the source of the resolution that may not be as good as the T1. So there's, there's all different kinds of way that you can use. Um, for the segmentation, once you get a nifty file, you can load it in DSS Studio. Any questions? I'll stay a long longer to 11.30 of three minutes more. And then I will talk with Vita. So later I will go to a, the link I, I sent you um, in case if you have some data you're not able to share screen. Okay, thank you. Sorry, last week I don't have video recording. Um, but like the, I will have this workshop again, probably next year, early next year. So every year I may have two or even three workshop, depend on how many people would need to learn the tool. Or you can go through the documentation and see if you can find some of the answer here over there. But first week is mostly about regions and then how to use a region menu. And literally you can just try each of them. Um, some of them maybe you could quickly find the figure out what's the function. Any questions? Okay, well, thank you for your time. Um, I'm going to end here um, to another breakout room with specific user who those have questioned about um, and not able to share the screen here. And thank you for your participation. Thank you.